you were watching real solar cars. So today I'm going to show what happens or so when you solar charge a Chevy Volt. Now my solar charging system has been operational for a week now. But this would be the first video I make about it. So here we see the gasometer says 29 miles of range. And I have used 2.1 kilowatt hours. So now I will let it charge for a day and we will check this stuff later. All right, so here is what my uh, dashboard says after a day of solar charging. So the gasometer has risen from 29 miles of range to 37 miles of range. Now, I think that I am, by doing the solar charging, I think I am confusing it or so because my uh, data logging system has said that I uh, collected 1.2 kilowatt hours of energy today. And that is the net energy into the battery from my the output of my converter. So that should be at most five miles of range. But yet the gasometer has risen by eight miles. You know, and that must be because by charging the battery or so that it, I have increased the voltage of it, which is apparently how it estimates the state of charge on the battery. So now, now I'm going to go for a short drive and see what uh, happens to these numbers. Okay, so I drove a mile. The gasometer, it went down by one mile, and I used about 300 watt-hours of energy. So that is not at all unreasonable. But I still think that the gasometer reading is being inflated by my solar charging more than it should be based on the amount of energy I collected. So today, after solar charging, the screen is showing fully charged. But this number here hasn't been reset. We have a website for this project too. Unsurprisingly, it is at realsolarcars.com. The most interesting part of the site right now is the data log page. Click on stats to see how much solar power the car generates on a daily basis. The data is collected and uploaded automatically. So 1.3 kilowatt hours is easily 4 miles of range or so and on some days I can even get up to 5 miles of range. Now let's see the current setup. So this car has two 200 watt solar panels mounted to the roof. So that power is routed through this cord here and to a DC to DC converter under the hood. So this DC to DC converter is mounted in place of the engine cover you know, and that's mostly due to the size of it, or so that th this is a first generation design, so, so without a lot of uh, consideration or so as to minimizing the size of it. So, and then the, actually, the air intake of the Chevy Volt is routed through the engine cover. So, you know, I had to do some rerouting of the air engine air intake in order to. Uh, be able to remove it or so without causing harm to the engine. So these are just off the shelf parts from an auto store. This is a piece of uh, exhaust pipe actually but it seems to work well for this application and it was the right size. 
So this converter is a custom design but from real solar cars to convert the 36 volt maximum power point voltage of the solar array to the 380 volts required to charge the traction battery. And it also controls the pre-charging of the battery contactors. Now the Chevy Volt experts will know that the Chevy Volt has two high, separate high voltage circuits, one for the main drive system and one for the charger. And I'm connected to the charging circuit because the contactors on that side consume less power than those on the main circuit. Solar panels also run to another charge controller near the back of the vehicle. So there is this wire here or so and then I have splitters that then feeds this wire going to the back of the vehicle with a off-the-shelf uh, 12 volt maximum power point charge controller. You know it takes some 12 volt power to run the contactors and battery management system so I want to be sure that you know, I am supplying all of that power from the solar panels and not running my 12 volt battery down. And also it's a, nice to have the 12 volt battery being trickle charged all day to prolong the lifespan of it. And also here is my pure sine wave inverter which has been shown in pre uh, previous videos. I leave that hooked up all the time because the time you need it or so is not the time you want to be uh, tearing apart the trunk area in order to connect it but that is not part of the solar charging system now what you might be wondering is why I don't just use the J1772 charging port and the reason for that is it was apparently not designed for solar charging the minimum current that the J1772 protocol can specify is 6 amps. So 6 amps at 110 volts for a very low powered level 1 charging setup is 660 watts which is more than double the amount of power that my solar array can generate uh, around noon on a really sunny day. It would be really difficult to add enough solar panels to a vehicle that is able to supply 660 watts in order to use the J1772 connector. So, since, so since it would be very difficult to generate 660 watts of power from solar panels mounted on a vehicle, most solar car conversions use a buffer battery to store that energy. The problem with doing that is that battery will degrade as it's used and when you calculate out the cycle life of the battery and the purchase price of it for the energy stored it's very difficult to store the energy and have it come out cheaper than buying it from the electric grid. You know now some other people use their uh, buffer batteries to store additional energy and increase the range of their vehicle. You know, since I have a Chevy Volt with a backup gas engine, adding uh, additional battery capacity doesn't have much value to me.